Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And today is our unit on history, and we're going to talk a little bit about the history of animation. Of course, we can't have、uh, animated movies without animation, like Disney movies and Pixar, and、uh, what's that studio Ghibli in Japan?、Uh, they're all animated movies. But maybe you've seen this early device that came from the 1800s、uh, that you could、uh, see a little short animation with, and this process is called, or this machine was called, the phenakistoscope, and that gave birth to animation. Without that, we would not have the cartoon movies that we love so much. It's kind of cool to、uh, go back in history, go back in time, and see how. Uh, one clever person came up with this idea to animate or make pictures or drawings move.、Uh, I was saying to Tom before we started, they're kind of amazing to me. These people who come up with these new inventions,、uh, and he's right. He said to me, "Well, some of them are just accidents, but whether it's an accident or someone was just."、Um, Playing around with something until they came up with this, I still think it's amazing. So、mm. we're going to talk about、uh, something that gave birth or preceded our modern day animation, which we kind of take for granted. We're going to talk about、uh, how it how it came about and、uh, how we now have animation like we do today, which is very sophisticated. Indeed, it is. So let's read through our article now one time, and we'll come back to talk about it. In this day and age, we're so used to seeing moving images that we take them for granted. Whether it's taking videos on our phones, watching cartoons, or sending short GIF reactions via text, we can't go anywhere without catching glimpses of moving images on screens. But just a few centuries ago, this notion didn't exist at all. It wasn't until one astonishing device was invented that pictures could come to life. The device in question was called the phenakistoscope. This tongue-twisting name has the approximate meaning of a target that deceives the eye in Greek. Incredibly, it has two inventors. The idea for the phenakistoscope came simultaneously to Belgian physicist Joseph Plateau and Austrian mathematician Simon von Stampfer in 1832. Both men had been working with optical illusions and found the same easy but entertaining way to give the impression that a picture was moving. The way a phenakistoscope works is surprisingly simple. A series of images is drawn on a cardboard disc, and small slits are cut in between each image. The disc is attached to a handle and then set with the image side facing a mirror. When someone turns the handle rapidly and looks through the slits into the mirror, the images on the disc appear to move in a looping animation. The phenakistoscope seemed nothing less than magical, but its popularity was short-lived. It was soon replaced by more sophisticated moving picture devices like the zoetrope and thereafter projection and film. However, This fascinating early animation device has experienced a revival in recent years. Some online artists have been collecting and digitizing phenakistoscopes as rotating GIFs that show the charm of their art styles. In addition, people have been making their own versions as a fun and artistic hobby. Give it a try yourself and experience the magic of making your own moving pictures. Okay, guys, let's get started. Let's take a look here. It's how the phenakistoscope gave birth to animation.、Uh, if you give birth to something,、uh, you could be giving birth to a real baby, a human baby, or maybe your、uh, dog is having puppies, or your cat is having kittens. Here, we're just talking about something that preceded something else. So this existed before our modern day animation, and animation. 
is just when you take drawings or pictures and it looks like you're moving them.、Uh, nowadays, we use computers to do this, but、uh, there are different kinds of animation.、Uh, there's clay models that sometimes they'll still use today, which are kind of funny, but those are real slow because you have to stop and readjust those clay models every time you want to change a position.、Um, but yeah, nowadays most of our animation is done through computer.、Uh, exactly. So early animation included this device called the phenakistoscope,、mm -hmm. and that gave birth to animation. It was one of the earliest ways in which we could animate things. And again, that's like seeing one image at a time, and then our mind combines all those images together in a series of images, and it looks like something is moving. Now, in this day and age, we're so used to seeing moving images that we take them for granted. That is true. We whip out our phones whenever we're bored, and we'll probably see some kind of animation on a social media website or something like、yeah. that,、uh, or videos. But of course, we see animations as well, and they're so common that we don't really think about how they were made. We kind of take them for granted.、Uh, we use this phrase to talk about things that are so common in our lives that we don't really appreciate them anymore. Like when you get married, and of course, you love your wife or your husband for maybe the first. Six months or so, and then later you kind of take them for granted. You don't really appreciate them anymore. You don't treat them as well. I know. Or、um, maybe you're just、uh, underestimating the value of something.、Uh, you are undervaluing something. You don't really properly recognize it or appreciate something. It could be,、uh, you know, some thing in your life or some person in your life. You definitely don't want to take your family for granted. Or your friends for granted, because if you do,、uh, they may stop treating you so nice or not be your friend anymore.、Uh, some of us in Taiwan take our food for granted, take having plenty of food for granted.、Uh, we always need to be appreciative or appreciate the things that we have. So whether it's taking videos on our phones. Which a lot of people these days do, or watching cartoons, or sending those short GIF reactions、uh, instead of you know、uh, responding to someone's post with ha 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 or thank you or what are you talking about? You can find these funny GIFs online that you can add. Those are kind of fun.、Uh, so whether it's doing any of those things, we can't go anywhere without catching glimpses or short, quick looks of moving images on screen. Which is so very true. All、uh, right, so we see animation everywhere, and again, we probably take it for granted. We don't really appreciate how it's made. I can uh, speak uh, from personal experience. My daughter is majoring in animation at university, so when she does some projects, my goodness, she has to spend hours and hours working on just maybe a couple of seconds of footage. It is quite complicated, time-consuming. So yeah, we don't really、uh, un we don't really appreciate、yeah. uh, the effort that goes into animation. Especially Pixar movies, you know they have、uh, hundreds of people working on those, or even going way back to 1940 when Pinocchio came out.、Uh, that's quite amazing. There, the amount of time they spent on that making an animation. But we're going back even farther or further than that.、Mm -hmm. And of course, well, the next sentence here says, "But just a few centuries ago, this notion didn't exist at all, and it wasn't until one astonishing device was invented that Pixar." Pictures could come to life, so it wasn't until something happened that something else happened. So this is a structure that we use when we talk about history. And it wasn't until I came to Taiwan, for example, that I realized how good Taiwanese food is. <laughs> It really is good,、um, and that's why、uh, a lot of us have gained some weight. So,、mm. yeah, it's tough. It's tough when you're eating such tasty treats, especially in the night market. So, here's a phrase in our vocabulary list, and that's "come to life." When something co comes to life, it just means、um, it is kind of animated. It feels like it's real life that you're watching. For example, we could say, "Oh, this is a novel that's been、uh, adapted into film or adapted for the stage, and it's now come to life." Instead of just reading about things on a page, you can see people moving and and talking to each other. You can hear things、uh, that will make things. 
come to life.、Uh, it could be literal, where someone has died. For example,、uh, in the scriptures, in the Bible, we'll talk about someone who has died and was brought back to life. That's a, a literal definition of this, but here, when something comes to life, it just gets very animated and fun.、Uh, a lot of festivals bring a lot of the culture here to life. It comes to life when you can see and hear, and and taste sometimes and experience things yourself. Or I could say it was a really boring party, but then when Mike came, it came to life,、yeah. and it was really exciting. He got out his bass guitar and started playing for everybody, <laughs> and everybody just had the time of their life. Right. Well, let's move on now to the next paragraph. Here it says the device in question was called the. Phenakistoscope.、Uh, I think it's still around. I think some companies probably make it for fun, but、uh, people don't really use this as a way to look at animation. It's just kind of interesting to、uh, see this. But、uh, of course, modern animation is much more sophisticated now. So it's got a tongue-twisting name. It's not easy to say. In fact, I spent a couple of、uh, a couple of minutes even trying to find the pronunciation online,、mm. and I finally found a YouTube video that explained it. So, phenakistoscope. Yeah, it's also very long, but don't let it frighten you. It's not too hard to say once you break it down into syllables. Phenakistoscope. So it it says here that its name has the approximate meaning of a target that deceives the eye in Greek. Most people don't study Greek anymore, and unless you are Greek and you live in Greece or、uh, Cyprus, you probably don't、uh, have much. Much association with this language. It's the ancient Greek that they're、uh, basing this word on. And when you use the word approximate, it means it's not exact, but it's very close. We often use approximately quite often in English, right, as an adverb. But here, it's an adjective. The approximate or、um, closely related meaning is this、uh, definition in Greek, and we have、uh, we have quotations around it because this is exactly what it means in Greek itself. Right, so it's a tongue-twisting name,、uh, sort of like、uh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, <laughs> or sister, 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 or something. Those are tongue twisters. So, plenakistoscope is kind of difficult to say as well, and that's kind of what it means in Greek. And we'll continue talking about this fascinating device in just a couple of seconds. But please stay tuned. We'll be right back after we listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. 我是派老师。今天讲解的是十月十九号 Unit Ten。这是一份篇章结构的练习题，内容关于一个有趣的发明——费纳奇镜。光听名字，我相信多数听众跟我一样都不清楚这到底是什么玩意儿。其实，这就是让静态的图像在我们视觉错觉影响之下变成动态的一种发明。好。我们先一起解题吧。在解篇章结构的问题之前，老师要跟大家强调，答题之前，请大家务必先看一下四个选项，让自己心里面有个底。有哪一些句子可以呢，让文章变得更完整？甚至于，同学在有时间的情况之下，应该要先粗略的把这四个选项排个顺序。有些选项句子本身可以提供线索，让我们知道大概会在文章的前、中、后哪一段出现。此外，篇章结构最重要的就是回填的句子和前后文务必要保持文艺连贯，承先启后。请大家谨记得“前后连贯，文艺通顺”这八字真言。好，我们先一起看第一题，前面提到。现在这个时代，我们对于动态图像习以为常，无论是在手机上录影、看卡通等等，不论身在何处，都能在屏幕上看到动态图像 （moving images）。后一句则是，直到有一项惊人的装置问世，图像才得以栩栩如生呈现在我们眼前。这前后两句落差很大，一则说到现在的情况，动态图像 （moving images） 几乎无所不在；后面则说后来有了个装置，我们才得以见识动态图像
，可见这中间有个转折，叙述了过去的情形。以前动态图像可能根本不存在。才接着在后面的句子解释，到底是什么因素造成了这一大改变。因此，第一题答案选 C。But just a few centuries ago, this notion didn't exist at all. 但才几个世纪之前，这种概念根本不存在。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. It's our history unit, and we're talking about the fascinating phenakistoscope, which precedes animation that we're familiar with today.、Uh, we found out that、uh, it's something that most of us take for granted. Having animation in our lives, it's all around us these days. Just shooting videos on your phone is a form of animation. Because people are moving, walking, and talking,、uh, but we also have gifs that we use、uh, when we post online, which are kind of fun. And、uh, this is a form of that, but it's really kind of prehistoric. Almost, it was a long time ago. We're going to talk about、uh, who was involved with this particular invention, but、uh, first, we're going to say that.、Uh, You need to practice this word for a while. It's not easy to say phenakistoscope, but you might be、uh, really impressing your friends and family if you can actually say this. I didn't know how to say this word until about a couple of hours ago. So,、uh, if you don't know how to say it, you're not alone. Most、uh, Americans wouldn't either. Well, to let you know, I had not heard of this word before today's lesson, so I, I was, a, you know, aware of this concept yeah, of this seen, kind of animation. You've seen one, right? I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, we've seen these machines,、mm -hmm. but、uh, very few people know what they're actually called. So, yeah, if you don't know this word, don't worry about it too much. But、uh, the idea for this machine, the phenakistoscope, came simultaneously to Belgian physicist. Joseph Plateau and Austrian mathematician Simon von Stumpfer in 1832. I took a semester of German back in high school, so I was uh, using my uh, German experience there to pronounce that last name. I could be wrong, though. Germans are kind of picky about how their、mm. language is pronounced. No, I think you're correct with that one. Von Stumpfer. Yeah, I think I said von or something, but it doesn't really matter.、Von. Let's just say a Belgian guy and an <laughs> Austrian guy. Uh, we're working on this idea at the same time.、Wow. So here we've got the adverb simultaneously, which means something is happening at the same time. So we've got、uh, Joseph and we've got Simon working on this idea at the same time.、Uh, we don't know if they got the idea from some place and it, this was just a coincidence or something, but they did、uh, actually work on this more or less at the same time. They were doing it simultaneously,、uh, just like sometimes you might. Uh, Uh, try playing basketball, for example. You need to run and dribble the ball simultaneously. You need to do lots of things at the same time. Wow! So maybe they had a common friend, a friend that、uh, knew both of them. We don't know. So both these men had been working with optical illusions and found the same easy but entertaining way to give the impression that a picture was actually moving. Uh, here we've got one of our vocab words, illusion, which is a noun. If you talk about an illusion, you're talking about something that seems to be different from the way it really is. A lot of times we talk about mirages being optical illusions. Optical means related to your eyes. So you've heard those stories where there's someone out in the desert and they don't have an, any more water left and they're dying, and suddenly in front of them they see a mirage,、uh, which looks like a little oasis, you know, where there's a tree and a little pond, and suddenly they think they've been saved from death. Sometimes it's just an illusion, or your mind playing a trick on you, and、uh, they're kind of playing a trick on your minds with this particular phenakistoscope. 
Right, it's like painting patterns on a floor. It looks like there's a hole there, but there really isn't. It's an optical illusion, and indeed, they had been working on this optical illusion, and they found the same easy but entertaining way to give the impression that a picture was moving. So again, it's not really moving. It just looks like it's moving. It is an optical illusion. Now, the way a phenakistoscope works is surprisingly simple. A series of images is drawn on a cardboard disc, and small slits are cut in between each image. Cardboard is like thick paper, and a slit is just a small space that is not very wide. So the slits are cut in between each image. And the disc is attached to a handle, and then set with the image side facing a mirror. It's kind of complicated here, but in any case, when someone turns the handle rapidly, when they turn the handle fast, and the disc spins, and the person looks through the slits into the mirror, then the images on the disc appear to move in a looping animation. Now, if something's looping, it's just repeating itself over and over. It's like a horse galloping.、Uh, they'll just Uh, start at the beginning again, and it'll look like the horse is continuously running. Or sometimes when I、uh, am watching a video and I'm using VLC an app,、uh, some software, you can tell that application that you want it to loop or just keep playing again and again and again. Now the phenakistoscope seemed. Nothing less than magical, but its popularity was short-lived or didn't last very long. That's what short-lived means. So it was soon replaced by more sophisticated moving picture devices, like the zoetrope, and thereafter projection and film. So this is the order that they came in.、Uh, we had the、uh, phenakistoscope, and then the zoetrope. And then came projection, and then film. Now, when you're talking about something that's sophisticated, it just means it's usually more complex or complicated,、uh, especially technology. If you're talking about something that's very、uh, sophisticated in terms of technology, it's something that's kind of difficult and complicated to understand. So, when they started that phenakistoscope, was kind of、um, relatively easy to make and to understand, and then things got more and more complicated. Now, when you are using projection, you're taking something and you're usually using light and casting that image onto a wall or to a screen. For example, we use projections when we're、um, trying to show a PPT presentation, PowerPoint,、yep. PowerPoint,、uh, or as PPT as they say here.、Um, mm. I never had any clients that said PowerPoint. It was always PPT, and I was like, "You can say PowerPoint. It's okay."、Mm. Um, So yeah, you use that projection or projector is the name of the piece of equipment that you can use. Some people are using projectors to watch movies these days, and then there's film where you go to a theater and sit down and watch、uh, whatever you're watching, and that's being projected or that picture is being shot through that theater to the screen in front of you. And of course, nowadays we have video and、uh, computer animation. However, this fascinating early animation device, again the phenakistoscope, has experienced a revival in recent years, which means people have become interested in it again.、Mm -hmm. Some online artists have been collecting and digitizing phenakistoscopes as rotating GIFs that show the charm of their art styles. So, if you take old things like photographs or slides and things, and You make them so you can see them in the computer. We call this process digitizing things. You might need to scan them or something. And in addition, people have been making their own versions as a fun and artistic hobby.、Mm -hmm. Indeed, there are videos on online that show you how to do this. Now we're using this word rotate to talk about、uh, something going around in a circle. So it's turning in a circular movement, usually around a center point. The Earth. Rotates on its axis, on its own axis, and then、uh, revolves around the sun,、uh, which is a slightly different verb. To rotate, though, again, just means to kind of move in a circular pattern. You can also rotate jobs with a coworker.、Uh, maybe you don't want to work every weekend, so you rotate. He works one weekend, you work the next. That's also a way you can use this verb to rotate. 
Okay, so you could give it a try yourself and experience the magic of making your own moving pictures. So yet、yeah, you could use the phenakistoscope to do this, or you could use the zoetrope, or just、uh, some of those、uh, downloadable apps on your phone that let you animate things as well. It's a lot of fun, but of course it's very time consuming. Yeah. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's turn things over to our Chinese teacher. 接着请看第二题。前文提到，这项谈论中的装置被称为“费纳奇镜”。这个绕口的啊，非常绕口的名称，在希腊文里面意思是蒙骗眼睛的标的。而后面一句则说，这两位都在研究视错觉，并发现同一种简单有趣的方法，可以让人误以为图像在移动。这一题太简单了，怎么说？空格后说到这两名男士，所以前文一定要先提到两位男士的名字。所以第二题我们选 B， 意思是令人难以置信的是，费纳奇镜有两位发明者，比利时物理学家 Joseph Plateau， 还有奥地利数学家 Simon von s t a m f e r 同时在西元一八三二年有这个发想。紧接着，请看第三题。前一段最后提到，这两位科学家都在研究视错觉，而且发现同一种方法可以让人误以为图像在移动。后一句说，纸板的圆盘上画了一系列图像，而且每幅图像之间都切出一条狭窄的细缝。我们从后面的句子可以看出，这一段在解释两位科学家他们所想出的方法。一步步告诉读者，在我们眼中这些图像是怎么动起来的。因此，第三题选 D， the way 就是 D 这个选项，意思是费纳奇镜的运作方式意外的简单。最后，请看第四题，请看最后一段开头，费纳奇镜看起来相当神神奇，不过很快就退了流行。Short lived 是维持没多久的。短命的意思。不久以后，它就被更复杂、精密的动画装置所取代，比方说西洋镜，然后是投影和电影。而下一句说，有些网络艺术家持续收集费纳奇镜，并且把这个数费纳奇镜数位化为转动的 GIF 图档，以展示其艺术风格的魅力。从前后文来看。可见，费纳奇镜从兴起到没落，最近又开始受到大众的关注。因此，第四题选 A， 意思是：然而，这种引人入胜的早期动画装置，近年来经历了复兴。好，以上是我们对费纳奇镜这一篇篇章结构练习题的讲解。希望同学透过练习，能够更加熟悉答题技巧。Thank you for listening. That's it for today, everybody. Thanks for joining us, and、uh, all of you are welcome to have discussions about animation amongst yourselves. I'm sure it will be a fascinating conversation. From all of us here at English Digest, my name is Tom, and I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.